Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to the Uplift with Vision. I'm Reverend Patty. I'm here to guide you through this next 15, 20 minutes of uplifting conversation. So let's start by praying in. Oh, I give great thanks for this day. I know God is all there is. I know from the grass that grows on the earth to the stars overhead and everything in between, I know it is all spirit showing up in form, just absolutely knowing of itself as that. I know that everything in the manifest universe is a thought that God is having. It is all good. It is all God. From the smallest to the greatest and everything in between, we know and accept that there is one life that this life is whole and blessed and complete, containing everything. And we know that it, is, that it is our life right here, that we are some part of the whole life of God, some individualized thread in the tapestry of all life. And so I give great thanks for this time we spend together, knowing it is blessed. And so it is. Amen. So good afternoon. Welcome to Thursday's Uplift. And I'm calling today Thermostat Thursday. Yeah. Right? You're like, what does that mean? Thermostat Thursday. And here's why. Wayne Muller wrote a book called A Life of Being, Having, and Doing Enough. And he explained it this way. He said, we keep doing and doing and doing and hoping to be enough, to do enough, to satisfy ourselves, but it never occurs. It's like a broken thermostat in our house. It's supposed to go on when the house needs heating, but when the house is up to temperature, it's supposed to signal the heater to shut off for a while. So if that thermostat is broken, it doesn't shut off, right? It doesn't shut the heater off, and soon our house feels like a sauna. Well, when we're unconscious of what's going on within, we are that broken thermostat. We keep doing and doing and doing something, anything other than addressing the real underlying issue. The real issue is the false belief and the need to cover it up by doing, right? By doing, by keeping ourselves busy over here instead of replacing and getting a new thermostat. We have to replace the false belief with the truth. And that's really what needs to happen. Ernest Holmes said this. He said, while we cannot avoid having negative experiences, we don't have to entertain them. Right? Our false beliefs tend to show when we're not really looking in there. Right? And we're not shining the light on them. They tend to be running the show on us. And, and, and what we need to do is really get in there and to exchange that false belief for a truth about ourselves that we can know and we can rely on and we can change our lives with. You know, the releasing prayer is a prayer we, uh, we've used in the class, the financial freedom class. Anybody remember that one? Yeah, I hope so. Well, the releasing prayer is a process, really, to become aware of what that false belief is. I'm not worthy. I'm too tired. I'm too old. I don't have the energy. I'm not educated enough. I'm afraid to be alone. Whatever those false beliefs are, this releasing prayer is here to root them out. And, and the prayer process is about addressing that false belief. But it's more than that, really. The first line in the releasing prayer is, I release my belief in whatever it happens to be for you. Whatever that false belief is that's holding you back, that keeps you out picturing the same old, same old over and over and over again. Whatever that false belief is. It's usually a false belief in lack, or it's a false belief in loneliness, or it's a false belief in limitation, or it's a false belief in sickness, whatever it happens to be. So the first thing we want to do is to address that false belief. The second line of the releasing prayer is really the important one. It is, I release my need to, right? Fill in the blank. This identifies the thing that we do to avoid feeling 
those feelings that the false belief brings up in us. Does that, that make sense for you? So, so for example, we start a project and every time we start a project, we get sidetracked, right? There is a false belief causing discomfort and that discomfort gets treated by doing something that we do temporarily to relieve the discomfort. So I hope that makes sense. This sidetracking behavior keeps us from addressing the discomfort of our fear of our false belief instead of pressing through it, which really we are meant to do. So you can see how that behavior tends to repeat itself. It'll continue to, to recreate the same stuckness in our lives. Like say, for example, you sit down to pay the bills, right? We sit down to pay the monthly bills. We start getting that feeling, and the feeling is the discomfort. The feeling of not enoughness comes up. There's not enough. I'm not enough. You know, there's not enough in the bank account. And this is a painful feeling. It's a constriction feeling. So what happens? Oh, all of a sudden, we have to get up and get a drink. Or we have to get up and make a sandwich. Or, or we have to go out and shop for something, buy something. And what that, what that behavior does, what that disruptive behavior does, is it interrupts the feelings that we're having that are, that, are, that are coming up in us based on the false belief. It's avoidance behavior to get away from the feelings the false belief is generating inside of our body. Does that make sense, right? I hope that makes sense. So, so a lot of this goes on really even below our level of awareness. You know, this, this disruption behavior of, of getting interrupted, doing something else when we're in the process of doing something. It's a self-sabotaging maneuver, even though, even though we're temporarily soothed by the disruptive behavior, it's not helping us. It's keeping us from addressing the real false belief underneath and pressing through that false belief and going through it to, uh, to find the mental equivalent, to find the truth about ourselves. So, so we work on becoming awake to it. We have to work on becoming awake to it. And Ernest Holmes said this in the, in the basic ideas of science of mind. He said, we need to keep clearly in mind the difference between a fact, something that is evident and concrete, and a truth, that which is everlasting, whether we can see it or not. Right? A lot of times the truth is still the truth, whether we can see it or not. When we pray, when we have that demonstration in mind, when we get to the truth, we know the truth, absolutely. It may not be apparent in our physical surroundings yet, but we know it is truth, right? So this is what he's saying. That's the difference between facts and truth, is that the truth always is, whether or not we see it. And to change our thinking, we really have to change our lives, and we really have to change... Um, uh, those basic underlying beliefs, right? Change our thinking, change our life is our tagline for religious science. But we have to know what it is we're thinking first before we can change it. So, so this releasing prayer really gets to that. What is it I'm afraid of? You know, the fear to faith worksheet that we do, that the releasing prayer is in. We can go over that and we can realize what that underlying false belief is. And the more important part, what is that behavior we engage in that, that disrupts our pattern so we never get to understand the false belief or change it with a mental equivalent? So, so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about just coming into a conscious right? consciousness around what they are. Because honestly, we are here in our bodies to live life to the fullest, right? I mean, that's what I'm here to do, to absolutely be the most self, you know, uh, um, self-expressed individual. Because there's only, there's only you. You're the one, one of a kind you. So we are here to express. We are here to live life to the fullest. We are here for a brief moment in time, if you really think about it. Our immortal souls are forever expressing, forever expanding, right? But our physical bodies are only here for a short period of time. They have expiration dates. 
So it is incumbent upon us to live life to the fullest, to absolutely go through those limiting beliefs and get rid of them so that we can live the most self-actualized life that, that we really desire. Anurag Gupta said this, he said, be miserable, have a sucky life, die. Be okay, get by, have a few highlights, die. Rock it, give it everything you've got, live out loud, die. However you play the game, it ends the same. It's your call. Well, I've got to tell you, I prefer to rock it to the max. That's my decision. And in order to do that, we have to release ourselves from those false beliefs, those limiting beliefs, those beliefs that hold us back. So when you're distracted, what we, what we do instead of going with the distraction is we go within right? We practice a little tough love with ourselves. And, and when the discomfort arises within us, instead of going to the distraction behavior, go to the releasing prayer instead. Go to the releasing prayer instead. And remember, I don't know if you remember it. I don't know if you've ever done it before. Let's do it right now. The releasing prayer again, remember, is I release my belief in Whatever that false belief is that is holding you back, whether it's lack or limitation or loneliness or sickness or any of those things that keep you from accomplishing the things that you'd like to accomplish in life, right? And, we, and I love that we, we make it a visceral thing. So we'll, we'll throw our left hand out and say, I release my belief in. And that's whatever that, that false belief is for you, right? So you do that. I release my belief in, I don't know, say it's lack. I release my belief in lack. And then with your other hand, you say, I release my need to. And now remember that releasing the need to is the need to engage in the behavior of distraction, whatever that is for you, right? You do something that distracts you from feeling the discomfort of the false belief. And then at the end, you say, I'm grateful God is... And then here's, you want to use your word of truth. I am grateful God is the maybe abundance that I am. And you bring it back down to your heart space. So let's put it all together and let's do it together. And you say out loud what your words are. And, and I'm going to use the, the person that was, that was paying bills, right? This person who was paying bills. And what he did was, uh, or she, I don't know who it was. <laughs> Right? So let's, I release my belief in lack. I release my need to eat. I am grateful God is the abundance that I am. And bring it right down to your heart space. I want you to say your words and you say them out loud. You're all by yourself. Nobody's going to hear what your words are, what your false belief is, what your, what your distraction method is. So just say it out loud. Okay? Say it with me. All right? I release my belief in... I release my need to, I am grateful God is the, that I am. And do it again. I release my belief in, I release my need to, I am grateful God is the, that I am. Okay? One more time. I love threes. I release my belief in, I release my need to, I am grateful God is the, that I am. And that's the releasing prayer. It will absolutely work wonders. It'll press through that distraction behavior that you engage in that keeps you on that cycle of same old output, same old outcome, same old outcome, right? It'll break through that. When you stop doing that distraction behavior, then you can address that that false belief straight on and absolutely fill it in with the mental equivalent, which is the truth, right? When we just said the truth is one of the qualities of God and you can replace it with that and it, and it absolutely changes our lives. It, it opens us up to that more expansive experience of God as us in life. No more holding back. You want to live out loud to the max, right? Let's pray out. Ah, I give great thanks for this, for these exercises, for the knowing of truth, for the being, 
the place where spirit is showing up in all of its magnificence, all of its love, all of its joy, all of its abundance. I know and accept this is the truth for us. I know and accept that God is, we are. I know that there is a divine energy that is flowing through us and as us. And as we let it out, as we give it permission to be us in the world, we express it higher and higher and greater and greater and more loving, more energized, more abundant, more joyful than ever before. Giving great thanks for all there is, I simply let it be. And so it is. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on The Uplift. From my heart to yours, we are vision. There's no separation. We are one. Take care. Bye-bye.